Hello world, my name is Keon, and I just learned how to use material functions, so I figured I might as well share the info. Uh, what a material function is, it does functions for you, and you could just apply them to your materials. It's kind of makes no sense the way I explained it, so let me just go ahead and show you. We're going to make a new material, and uh, with this new material, I'm just going to call this um, base, no, you know what, master, there we go, you the master. Tile. My, my naming conventions are all screwed up right now. Ignore my naming conventions. I'm just doing this for me. I have no set order. And I'm going to call this Master master Tile Material. Now, I'm going to select all these. Open this SOB up. Drag them out. And totally undo everything I just did. And drag all of them in here. Alright, so we have our basic setup for our Master Material. Uh, just go ahead and line up everything as you know it should be we got our base color our roughness normal dragging the whole normal over there doesn't accept it like that gotta just drag from the node and boom we got a material homie so now two things I wanna do is A I wanna make this tileable and B uh, I want to be able to adjust the normal now we could do this and just this material but the thing about that is that when we do that inside this material we won't be able to really apply those uh, effects or huh, functions to any other material so that's what it, where material functions come in where they, they don't have to be used if you want to keep using it sometimes it is used to do complex math out of outside of the material but basically since I'm not that smart I just use it to do stuff that I see myself doing in a lot of other materials so let's go back out to the content browser and uh, add a new material function so right click background materials and textures material function we're gonna call this one uh, tile function there we go that sounds sexy so open this bad boy up and you will see that there is just an output this is going to be the final result of everything we do um, if that doesn't make sense, think of it this way. We do some stuff. Let's say you want to have, uh, I don't know, 1 plus 2, right? Whoops. So we have like two constants, and then we'll just add them together. So at the end of this, 1 plus 2 equals 3, and then that would be output to here. Now you can add other output nodes easily by... Uh, going to the side or just looking up the output functions and just dragging and dropping them uh, but make sure same thing with inputs actually inputs and outputs are both equally important well not inputs so much because you might not even need an input but when using multiple of either one make sure the sorting priority is set because it, it just makes things look neater, neater makes it seem like you kind of know what you're doing even if you don't like me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this guy out here. In fact, I'm going to make a copy of him. And for those of you who don't know, a very easy way to make a tileable texture is by multiplying the UV texture coordinates by a 2x2 two two vector. So I just added the texture coordinate by holding down the U key and clicking the background. I'm glad they kept that feature in because that would have sucked. And I'm just going to delete these guys because I don't need them. In fact, think of it like this. So, we're going to change both of these guys to, uh, both these inputs to uh, a one, a scalar input. Right? Think of it like this. We put something in here, and then it's just going to do whatever we want to it, and then eventually put it out here. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly. <laughs> it makes sense in my head. Hopefully it'll make sense in your head. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. I'm here for you. Um, also, very important before we do anything else, make sure you expose this to the library, and also, just to, just to seem sexy, we're going to put a library category here, so I'm just going to call this Keon's Functions. Make sure you never spell that name wrong, and if you want, this could be actually part of multiple categories, so I know that the, let's see what other categories exist. Mm, ooh, Vector Ops, I know about that one. So we're going to call this Vector Ops, Vector Ops. OPS. So, alright, so we have these two here. 
So we need to multiply a 2 by 2 vector by the text coordinate, which is very easy to do. All we got to do is make these two into a 2 by 2 vector by appending them. And if you don't know what I'm doing, um, I strongly recommend you just scroll through the documents that Unreal has on materials and material operations. They're really helpful. I don't know exactly where all these material masters learn their crap from because they, they make stuff that confuses the hell out of me. But go ahead and do that. So, okay, so what you saw me do is I put both the scalar inputs into it a pen. This is now a 2 by 2 vector. Um, and I multiplied that by the text coordinate. Now, let's see if I can preview this. I can't because there's nothing in here. So let's try this. Ah, there we go. That's how we preview. That makes sense now. So to use this node to preview stuff. I don't know if these carry over, but use these to preview if you need to. So what's going to happen basically is the more, the higher these numbers are, the more it's going to scale it by. And visually, this doesn't make sense to you, but it'll make sense once we apply it to the material. So final touches for this guy is delete that 5x5. Five five. Oh no, why are you autosaving now? Your timing is terrible. Your timing is terrible. I should probably disable these while I'm doing tutorials. Alright, so delete that. And make sure you name these right. So I'm going to call this uh, tile x. And everything's correct. I'm going to make sure this stays at 0. And I'm going to call this one tile y. And on the sort priority, I'm going to put this to 1. That way it goes second. Uh, otherwise, it could make it look like kind of retarded inside of the material. So we got all this going on. It looks sexy. Let's go ahead and save this. And go back to our master material. Now let's scroll down to the side. This is going to look so awesome. And look for Keon's functions. So I don't know my ABCs. I forget where K is at. Oh, it's so small I didn't even see it. So I already did this tutorial, so ignore everything I just did. Uh, <laughs> and, yep, there we go. So what we do now is just add some constants and change them into a parameter. This will come in handy later. So I'm going to do this really quickly. Uh, one on the keyboard, tap, click the background, and just add these and then change them into parameters. I'm going to name mine tile X, tile Y accordingly. Whoops, that was named stupid. Alright, and for the default values, I'm just going to put 1. That way we can actually see what we're doing. Alright, so this is the tile Y and this is the tile X. So I'm just going to plug this into each of these guys. Wish there was a faster way to do that. And... I'm also noticing something, noticing something stupid. I'm noticing quite a bit of, uh, I don't know if this is metallicy or whatever. It kind of some noticing some reflections around there. I'm just going to plug in a zero to the metallic just to be safe. I don't trust it. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to do. All right, then never mind. I'm silly. All right, so what we want to do now is, in order to see these changes faster anyway, uh, we're going to want to make a material instance. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to create a material instance, not even going to name anything different. All right, so let's go down. Once we open the material instance, you're going to see the material we made along with some parameters on the side. So check the checkbox next to the parameters if you want to change the parameters. Now keep in mind, too, I made two parameters for this. If you want them to scale evenly, all you got to do is basically make one and plug it into both of them, like so. But we're not going to do that. So see oh no something's wrong it's not scaling the normal map did I apply this to the normal map I did not very very important make sure you apply it to all materials otherwise you're gonna look silly just like I did alright now that works so now you see as we're scaling let me just go away from the seam we're scaling and it's scaling accordingly so this is a really really quick way to make a scalable texture and the best part about it is since it's a function we can apply that function to any material so let's go on to the last part and actually we got a few more steps before we go to the last part this next part took me a while to figure out 
Uh, still don't fully understand why it works, but hopefully with practice, I'll get a better understanding. What we want to do now is turn all of these guys into parameters, all the textures. Convert them to parameters. Don't convert them to texture objects, because then all this stuff that we've done won't apply. And yeah, there's probably a way to use a texture object and make it tileable, have a tile function be able to apply to it, but uh, I like this method more. It makes more sense to me. So I'm just going to call this base color and just main them all accordingly. Nothing fancy. Alright, so we got that done. And now what we want to do is create another function. And I'm going to call this mofo normal intensity. Because as we see here, and this is just me being weird, uh, normal map can be a little rough sometimes. It is supposed to be leather. And I don't know, that's kind of it's kind of flaky to me. So we're going to make another uh, material function and call him normal intensity. I'm hitting all the wrong keys. Also, real quick, let's just go ahead and um, if you have a map, which you should because you're awesome, go ahead and uh, add starter content to it if you haven't already. And in the starter content folder, there should be a prop folder. Go ahead and click that and just drag out the, uh, what's it called? I can't see it now. I'm blind. Oh, the preview mesh, um, the material preview mesh, static mesh. Just drag that out and call it a day. I'm just going to delete this one. And once you've done that, then apply your material to it. So I'm just going to drag my material instance, not your material master, but your material instance, and just drag it on him. The way to have it set is that it's going to pretty much uh, be work the way you intend for it to work. Unless, of course, it doesn't. Oh, there we go. All right, so that looks kind of sexy. Uh, perhaps a little bit too sexy. Let's scale down the tiling of this. Just so we could get a better uh, view of those normals. That's too too large. It looks kind of decayed now. So I'm just going to set this to 3. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Alright. So, next thing we want to do is mess with this normal intensity guy. So I'm going to open him up. Giggity. And... Um, if you've never, I remember doing this back in UDK, the way you adjust the normal map, in your head, it would make sense to, like, take a normal map and just multiply it by some constant one, but that doesn't work. In fact, the way uh, you adjust the intensity of a normal map is that you actually have to apply it by a, a constant, a three vector, because... It's this is a three by three vector also, so let's see how that works. I hope that still works anyway. I haven't tried this. Speaking out the side of my neck, so let's go ahead and multiply that, multiply that, put that on here. Now the thing about this though is that you always want the third constant to be uh, the blue channel. You always want that to be one. What you really want to ch affect are the R and the red and green channels, but you want to affect them evenly. Unless you don't, you know, it's up to you. So let's say we multiply these by 5, and we should see our normals just look this. Yep, that's disgusting. That's gross. I like it. All right, so we're going to, that's just an example showing you how we do this. Now, again, we'd like, if we want to do this in other materials, we'd have to set that up every time, but I'd like to just set it up once. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our output result. What we want to do is remember that the normal is a 3 by uh, 3 vector. A vector with three channels. So we're going to do a input. Search for him. And when we drag this guy out, we're going to call him uh, normal map. And he's already a vector three by default. So leave him at zero. Ah, that all looks sexy. So now what we want to do is get our, uh, our red and green channel intensity. So how do we do that? Well, we make a new vector from scratch. And I'm going to make this guy 1. That way we just only have one value to control. So just set it to input scalar. 
and this is going to be the R, the red and green channels. So again, just like before, go ahead and, and drag out an append node. And again, just going to go over this, study these things. But append just adds a channel every time, up to four channels, I believe. But I don't know any more than that. So right now we have an R, a red, and a green channel. In order to get our blue channel, all we got to do is append again. So we have our red, green channel. And that's going into the A slot of the second append node. And so now whatever goes into this node is going to be the blue node. And just for an example, I'm not going to actually apply this. Now that we have RGB coming out of here, anything that comes into B is going to be an alpha channel. Beyond that, I think it's just madness. Don't tempt it. You might find something you don't want to find. So we're going to add a constant to this because we never, again, we never want to change the blue channel. It's beautiful. That's the way it is. Doesn't need to change. We have, so we're going to set that to 1. And it's always going to be 1. And so we just go ahead and multiply like we did before. Boom. 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 And make sure this guy is, uh, yep, I didn't name this right. I'm going to call him Intensity. And set you to 1. Or 2, whatever. Anything that's not 0, pretty much, since we only have 2 values. And... I don't know, all this looks sexy to me. Oh yeah, Keon's functions. Uh do 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 So there we go. Actually you know what? Let me uh let me call this Keon's functions too. That way I don't get confused with the other one, because the other one works right correctly, and this one might not. And I like errors. Errors give us an opportunity to learn. So let's go down to Keon's functions too, because they don't exist. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close you again. Alright, so key on functions. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to type in normal intensity. Yeah, they don't exist. That's weird. And then who? Actually, you know what? Another way to uh, add these is just drag and drop them from the content browser. So we got a material here. And we got a normal intensity there. Drag and drop. There you go. I didn't know that was going to work. I just assumed it did. It would have made sense if it did. Alright, so we got a normal map. Drag that fool in here. Drag him out. And, of course, we're missing something. So we're just going to make a new parameter. Call this uh, normal intensity. Seeing that name a lot. Getting tired of it. Plug him in there and set him to 1. Alright. So, we save this. And... Yeah, take your time. It's okay. This is why we always use instance also, because compiling these textures can take some time. So now we got a normal intensity, and... Oh, look at that. And so this is basically how you... A basic, very, very basic... Uh, method of using material functions. Hopefully that came in ha uh, handy, and I will be making these files available in the download below. Thank you for watching. See you later.